us, behind us. Let's take a 360 degree Santiago de Compostela greeting, welcoming each other in our celebration. And as we bow our heads and close our eyes, we take a moment too to be of one mind and one heart in lifting up all our intentions, especially on this first Sunday of Advent. Let us remember to pray for the whole world, especially those who find themselves in difficult, desperate situations. We pray and its leadership, and we remember to pray also for all those who are in the front lines, first responders, those who provide poor and needy. Let us remember to pray also together with those who are joining us in worship through live stream and online. Today we have Deacon Dan with us. We now begin our celebration with our opening song. Good afternoon and happy new year. So COVID has not maybe gone crazy, but today is a new year because today we begin the new liturgical year. Last Sunday was the last Sunday of year A and we are now in year B of our liturgical cycle. And we begin our celebration for this new liturgical year Remembering God's sign of love and salvation, the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. And as we begin this celebration of this new liturgical year, we open our hearts to the mercy and compassion of our loving God.
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds as his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. All that you would read, send the heavens and come down. With the mountains speaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, nor eye ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who comes, who rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, O Lord of hosts, look down. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you on Christ Jesus that on him where you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge. As the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you in the, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you from the end. Impeachable in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful, and he himself, you were called to fellowship with the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge each with his own works, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. 
Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at the cock crow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am not a patient person, and I don't do well having to wait. So fortunately, it was my wife's job most of the time to pick our children up from school at the end of the day and wait for them. But there were times where I had to do it because of scheduling or whatever. And there was one period where there was a two-week period where I was going to have to pick up my daughter every day. So the first day I get there, I'm parked at the car, parked there waiting for school to let out. Seems like an eternity. Finally, school is let out. Here comes all the kids, except my daughter. And I'm sitting here watching. Where is she? Where, where, where is she? Where is she? And I can feel the frustration, the anger well up inside me. Finally, my daughter comes out of the building and takes the slow walk to my car. But I recognize, and as soon as I recognize her, an excitement comes over me knowing that she's there, that she's coming. And she gets in the car, and the, the excitement continues because once she's there, she's sharing everything that happened with her day and that wonderful, that wonderful events. Well, that happened several days in a row, and each day I'd get more frustrated, more angry, so I had a solution. I decided to bring a book. So therefore, instead of staring at the building, I found myself reading a very good book. But here's the funny thing that happened. I never noticed my daughter until she opens the car door. And you know what? She opened the car door right at a good part of the book. <laughs> so I'm sitting here, and it's like, hello. And I'm so focused on my book the energy was different. No longer was there the excitement on the drive home about what she had done because I was so into what I was doing instead of watching for her and being ready for her. And we see that today as we begin a new liturgical year, as Father Thomas mentioned. And this year we'll be focused on the Gospel of Mark. And we hear the key word. What was the key word in today's gospel? It was said about four times. Watch. Not wait, but watch. Because we, many times we think of Advent as a period of waiting. But it's Mark who tells us we're called to watch. But we're called to do something else. Not just watch, but we are called to watch with a purpose. You see, it's not just about keeping that vigilance. We hear in the parable that Jesus said each servant was given tasks to do. We're not called just to stand and be on guard at the gate and say, okay, Jesus, I'm ready, come, I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching. We're called to use this time to recognize what is God calling us to do. But unlike me, where I would get absorbed in the book, Jesus is telling us that our primary purpose is to recognize that God is coming. Jesus is coming. And so the things that we do, the things that God asks us to do, invites us to do for others, should lead us closer to watching for God. You see, my daughter coming to the car was not an interruption in what I was doing because that was my primary job, to be there and to be there and be with, be for her. 
But many times we may get self-absorbed into what we do and fail to recognize God present, already present in our lives. In our first reading today, we heard from Isaiah what could almost be like a 911 call to God. God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you here? Why, why do we not know you're here? You can hear that desperation that, we, that, that the prophet was saying, God's not here. And it goes even further. The prophet actually challenges God and says, God, why have you not cleaned up this mess that I have created? Look at, yes, we're sinning, we're doing all these things, but why have you not made a difference? Why have you not cleaned it up? How many times is that our prayer, that we think God has abandoned us because we recognize that God isn't there just doing what we think God should be doing? Because our call to watch is to look and turn towards God and find God even in the midst of those difficulties. We hear in the second reading the importance of recognizing that, yes, we're called to use the graces and the gifts we have received from the Holy Spirit. You and I are called to use those. And as Isaiah used that beautiful image in the first reading, we are called to recognize it is God who molds us and who's called to make a difference. So how can we know which gifts we should use? How do we know where God is and to where we should be watching? Simply, it is prayer. And I think each one of us has to look at this period of Advent how do we increase our prayer? Now, for many of us, there are so many distractions in life. I recognize that, there, that, that obviously the dishes still need to be done. Children need to be taken to sporting events or helped with homework. You know, we have tasks to do at our work, whatever those distractions are. And many times that gets in the way of prayer. And so many times we then resolve, okay, I'm going to eliminate some distractions so I make sure I have time for prayer. Well, I think our challenge is, especially recognizing the message that Jesus had in today's gospel, it's not about eliminating the distractions of our life. Because guess what? There will never be a perfect time. There will never be a time where there's no distractions, nothing going on. You and I are challenged very simply to find God in the midst of those distractions. Whatever distractions we have in life, it begins by saying, okay, I have these challenges right now. But where's God? How can I see God at this moment? And then by making that commitment, that's how we begin to truly watch with a purpose. We're called not to use the distractions as an excuse not to find God, but recognize God is everywhere, even in the midst of our greatest difficulties. As we began Mass today, we lit one candle on the Advent wreath, and in a few minutes we will have the blessing for our Advent wreath. I invite you to recognize that prior to lighting that candle, it was dark. We're here outside, and if we go outside the pavilion where there's lights, we recognize, especially under the tents, a darkness. But yet it's from that darkness we recognize that God's light truly can shine. And it may begin with one candle. As we prepare for Christmas, we will light more candles. Each Sunday, we will have an extra candle lit. May our prayer experience parallel that, that as we continue to, in the midst of distractions, look for God, that we can truly allow God's light to grow within us. 
funny thing about watching and waiting and watching is it allows us to focus on the future. You see, when we're waiting for something and we're watching, we're not looking at our past mistakes. We're really not even supposed to be focused on what we're doing now. But watching allows us to focus on our future. May we use this time to focus on that future. And I invite you to use our psalm today as the model prayer for this season of Advent. Three parts were to our response. The first part was, Lord, let, um, let us turn your face, let, help turn our face towards you. The, the, the word suddenly escaped me. But Lord, help turn our face towards you, that we recognize that. Once we turn our face in the direction of God, that we then second see God's face. And then, as the psalmist said, we truly will be saved. Together now we profess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, a true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We humbly place our prayers before our compassionate God. For the church, held close by the shepherd of Israel, that all will be open to receiving God's merciful love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their families, friends, and caregivers, that they know God's heal, healing power, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of the world, that they will be safe, fed, housed, and loved, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For this worshiping community of Santiago de Compostela, that we rouse ourselves to cling to God this Advent, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up to the Lord the intentions and petitions we hold in our hearts for our families and our loved ones. We offer this Mass in our continuing prayer for the souls of our dearly departed. And we lift up the intentions we have received online for the petition of John Patrick Reyes, for thanksgiving of Monsignor Sufino Ramirez and Christy Maglalang, we pray for those who are in need of God's strength and healing. For Esther Gitron, Cancio Castro, Buena Pineda, Red David, Isaac Santiago, and Lynn Santiago. For our dearly departed Milagro Salvador, Lani Salvador, Teresita Cachola, Ophelia Otamias, 
Lucio Mendoza, Mercedes Abog, Abel Santiago, Susana Rimondo, and Richard Diocampo. Remember the prayers we have placed in the Ark of Prayer chest, as well as those unspoken in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we shall have the prayer over our Advent wreath. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we have lit the candle of this Advent wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below Gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. 
that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all at last is made manifest, may we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother, bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them 
and the light of your love. And mercy on us, we pray, for the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, for the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages. You may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by the, <clears throat> and formed by His mercy, we dare to say, "Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us." And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
now we join in prayer our sisters and brothers who worship food together with us online. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a second collection, and uh, we'll take a few moments so that our hospitality ministers can go around. And the second collection is for our St. Vincent de Paul ministry. Just so you know, our last week's uh, collection of the food donation and drop-by have yielded almost, uh, when I saw the truck that from uh, South County Outreach, it's almost a full truck that we were able to give to help our needy brothers and sisters. So we thank you for your generosity. And this evening, we also have the table of our Knights of Columbus who are having the wheelchair fund drive for our veterans, for those who have been wounded in service. So we appreciate your generosity as well. Let's now lift up all these intentions in our hearts as we watch and pray to our loving Mother Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast unto hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all and your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, watching and glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week, everyone.